بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے لیکچر از اباؤٹ گیسٹرو انٹسٹائنل ریفلیکسس سو فرسٹ آف آل واٹ از آ ریفلیکس ٹو اینشیٹ ریفلیکس وی نیڈ ریسیپٹر با ریسیپٹر اسٹیمولیشن وی نیڈ اسٹیمولیس با اسٹیمولیس ٹرانسمیشن وی نیڈ پاتھ وے وچ از سینسری ان نیچر اینڈ ٹو ریسیو دا انفارمیشن وی نیڈ سینٹرز which may be either local, spinal or in the brain. And in the central stimuluses are coordinated or informations are coordinated and these coordinated informations are transmitted by motor pathway to the organ where response is produced. In this picture you can see the stimulus, the stimulus is received by the receptor that receptor take it by sensory pathway to the center which may be either in spiral cord in brain or local and there these stimuli are coordinated and then coordinated impulses are sent to the same same organ for production of action in this the, the impulses are carried from the organ by sensory pathway and for action impulses are sent by the motor pathway so this is the basic concept of reflex in which multiple units or pathways are involved structures and in which multiple structure and pathways are involved now reflexes of the gastrointestinal tract In gastrointestinal we have three type of reflexes the first one is local reflexes which is integrated entirely within the enteric nervous system these impulses have no center outside of the gastrointestinal tract but these impulses are originated in the GIT tract and act inside the GIT tract produce these actions these actions are either control these actions are control peristalsis gastrointestinal secretion maxing contraction and local inhibitory effects here is another mechanism which is called gastrointestinal principle in gastrointestinal principle when the proximal part is contracted the distal part become relaxed and this allow the food to move in the forward direction this is called intestinal principle the second reflex is sympathetic and local enteric nervous system it move the reflexes from the gut to the paravertebral sympathetic ganglia and back to the gastrointestinal tract here you can see that the center for these impulses are located in the paravertebral sympathetic chain ganglia from the gastrointestinal tract the impulses are sent to these to that sympathetic chain in this type of reflexes the center is located outside of the gastrointestinal tract and that center is the sympathetic chain which is located outside of the gastrointestinal tract and impulses are taken from the gastrointestinal tract to this sympathetic chain and then impulses are bring back from the sympathetic chain or from the sympathetic autonomic nervous system back to the gastrointestinal in third type of reflex which is also called long reflex the parasympathetic nervous system and the enteric nervous system both participate it is responsible for the peristalsis occurring at the caudal region of the stomach it involves reflexes from the gut to the spinal cord or brain stem and then back to the gastrointestinal tract gastroiliac reflex and defecation reflex these reflexes include gastroiliac reflex and 
defecation reflex. The long reflexes are responsible or the long reflexes are carried out by both parasympathetic and enteric nervous system. In this case, the impulses are generated in the gastrointestinal tract. They are either take to the brain stem or to the spinal cord and from there the impulses are then bring back to the gastrointestinal tract and these impulses are responsible for the gastroileal reflex or defecation reflex. Now dis let's discuss them one by one these reflexes in detail the gastrocolic reflex it is clear from its name that this impulse originate in the stomach and it is transmitted to the colon the gastrocolic reflexes is a physiological reflex that control the mortality of lower gastrointestinal tract following a meal when food is taken it acts as a stimulus and cause distension of the stomach. This distension causes stretching of the stretch receptor generate reflexes. These reflexes are then transmitted as a result of gastrocolic reflex. The colon has increased mortality in response to the stretch of the stomach with the ingestion of food. Here, when the stomach is distended, impulses are sent to the colon. This reflex sends impulses to the colon and cause increased mortality of the colon, due to which the food is pushed in forward direction and make space for the new food which is ingested. Here, Mortality also increase in the ileum. The reflexes propel existing intestinal content throughout the digestive system help make way for ingestion of food and is responsible for us to defecation following a meal. This impulse which originate from the stomach and stimulate the colon it stimulates the whole colon and urge to defecate following a meal. Physiology of gastrocolic reflex An increase in the electrical activity is seen as little as 15 minutes after eating. When the food is taken, this reflex is originated after 15 minutes. The gastrocolic reflex is unevenly distributed throughout the colon, with the sigmoid colon exhibit a greater phasic response to propel food distally into the rect. This stimulation of the colon from the stomach is not even, but it is in some part of the colon it is more intense and in some part it is weak. It is more intense in the rectum. Increased pressure within the rectum act as a stimulus for defecation. When pressure in the rectum is increased, it causes defecation. Small intestine motility is also increased in response to gastrocolic reflex. These Contraction are generated by the muscularis externa stimulated by the myenteric plexus. A number of neuropeptide have been proposed as mediator of gastrocolic reflex. These include serotonin, neuro tensin, cholecystokinin, prostaglandin, E1, and gastrin. Clinical significance of the gastrocolic reflex.
irritable bowel syndrome which is also called IBS the very act of eating or drinking can provoke an or reaction of the gastrocolic response in some patient with IBS due to their heightened visceral sensitivity and this can lead to abdominal pain and distension, flatulence and diarrhea. Constipation Patient with spinal cord injury and diabetes with gastroparesis secondary to diabetic neuropathy have an increased colonic transit time. As we know that in diabetes there is neuronal degeneration. As we know in diabetes there is neuropathy or degeneration of the neuron which leads to the decreased mortality of gastrointestinal tract and cause constipation. And this also occurs in spinal injury when signals are not transmitted to the gastrointestinal tract, mortality is decreased and leads to constipation. The gastrocolic reflex can also be used to optimize the treatment of constipation since the reflex is most active in the morning and immediately after meal constipation of stimulant laxatives such as sinusoids and biscodile during this time will urge to will augment the reflex and help increase colonic contraction and therefore defecation. Gastroileal reflex. This reflex originates in the stomach and act on the ileocecal well. It is the third type of reflex that work with gastrocolic reflex to produce an urge to urge to defecation. It is triggered by the opening of ileocecal well that move the content of digestive material from small intestine to the colon. This in turn stimulates colonic peristalsis and an urge to defecate. Enterogastric reflex. This reflex is a reverse reflex which originate in the intestine and move back to the stomach. Entero means from intestine and gastric to the stomach. Enterogastric reflex. The enterogastric reflex is stimulated by duodenal distension. When the duodenum is distended, this reflex is generated. It gets stimulated when the pH level in the duodenum is between 3 and 4 or 1.5 in stomach. This is the pH level 3 to 3 and 4 or 1.5 in the stomach. This reflex is then generated. When the enterogastric reflexes trigger serotonin or gastrin from the G gastrin cell present in the antrum of the stomach is inhibited. This retrograde impulse is inhibitory in nature. It causes inhibition of the gastric secretion by decreasing the activity of gastrin. As a result gets gastric mortality and secretion of the hydrochloric acid decrease. When the intestines are emptying these defecation reflex. Defecation is the term for the act of expelling feces from the digestive tract via the anus. This complex function requires coordination between the gastrointestinal, nervous and musculoskeletal system. In this reflex, nervous system, gastrointestinal system and musculoskeletal system are involved. The defecation reflex involves rectal contraction and internal and external anal sphincter relaxation. This reflex when generated 
it cause contraction of the rectum and relaxation of the internal and external sphincter when these reflexes originated in the rectum they transmitted to the spinal cord and from there through through parasympathetic nerve fiber valvic nerve they are sent back to the colon internal sphincter it causes contraction of the colon and relaxation of the internal sphincter defecation is involuntary from the colon to internal sphincter this reflex is involuntary where smooth muscle push pieces out how air it is under conscious or subconscious control at the level of external anal sphincter which is lined by striated muscle the external sphincter is lined by the striated muscle and it is under control of conscious or subconscious impulses and they are controlled from the higher center by pudendal nerve or motor nerve stimuli for initiation or defecation process there are three stimuli distension of the rectal void by feces when defecation start when there is distension of the rectal wall and from here impulses are sent by the pelvic plexus to the to the pelvic impulses are transmitted by the pelvic plexus gastrocolic reflex reflex Persists their travel from stomach to the large intestine. When there is food in the stomach, it transmits impulses from the stomach to the colon. This is another mechanism which is involved in defecation. And irritation by chemical or toxin in the wall of the large intestine. There are chemical and toxin. It also causes irritation of the receptor and generates reflex. rectal distension pressure more than 50 mm of mercury stimulates stretch receptor with the signal spreading to the descending colon sigmoid and rectum via the mentoric plexus when the pressure here in the rectum is increased more than 50 mm of mercury then the stretch receptor generates signals which spread from the descending colon sigmoid colon and rectum via the mentoric plexus here the mentoric plexus are stimulated and they generate contraction of the descending colon sigmoid colon and the rectum the process initiates the defecation reflex and force feces towards the anus these contraction then force the feces to the anus inhibitory mentoric plexus signal relax the internal anal sphincter when these reflexes are generated for defecation from the by the gastrocolic and from the rectal side the mentoric plexus inhibit the internal sphincter and relax it as a peristaltic way approach the anus defecation occur when the external anal sphincter is voluntarily relaxed this the external sphincter is under voluntary control from the higher center from the brain and through pudendal nerve signals when the situation is favorable for defecation the higher center send signals through pudendal nerve to the external sphincter and relax the internal sphincter and it leads to defecation or or evacuation of feces outside of the body mcq related the reflexes the first mcq is mass movement constitute an important intestinal event that lead to bowel movement mass movement cause which of the following contraction of the internal anal sphincter duodenal peristalsis gastric retropulsion hunger sensation rectal distension 
you have five second to response and the correct answer is rectal distension question 2 is mass movement are often stimulated after a meal by distension of the stomach which cause gastrocolic reflex and distension of the duodenum reflex mass movement often lead to which of the following bowel movement gastric movement hostations esophageal contraction pharyngeal peristalsis you have 5 seconds the answer is bowel movement up till now we learned that there are reflexes which are entirely generated with in the gut they control peristalsis gat secretion mixing contraction and cause local inhibitory effect the other impulses parasympathetic ganglia which occur through the parasympathetic ganglia the center is in the parasympathetic ganglia they are also called long distance signaling and they are gastrocolic reflex which act on the stomach which is generated from the stomach due to distension and the impulse is sent to the colon for evacuation the other reflex is enterogastric reflex which originate in the colon and small intestine act on the stomach and inhibit its motility and secretion the third reflex is gastroileal reflex which originate from the stomach act on the colon and ileocecal and increase ileal emptying the ileocecal is relax and the content from the ileum enter, enter into the colon the spinal cord brain stem central reflexes this is a duplication reflex it act on produce colonic rectal and abdominal contraction required for duplication and other reflexes pain reflex it cause inhibition of entire gastrointestinal tract remember when there is painful condition of the gastrointestinal tract motility and secretion in the gastrointestinal tract is inhibited and the last reflex is caused by the vagus nerve it control gastric motor and secretory activity for gastric motor activity please wash the motor function of stomach thank you please subscribe the channel press the bell icon for new lectures notification and add your valuable comment in the comment box for the improvement of the channel and also like the channel so thank you once again